Hey, Jason Heath here, talking to you today about one of my favorite apps for music and music on the iPad. That is Fourscore. I've been using Fourscore for years and I'm a huge fan. I wanna just go through and show you how I'm using Fourscore to organize my music and how adding more data to your parts, more metadata can really help when you're trying to find a piece for yourself or for a student. I do a lot of teaching and I'm using this thing with my private students and in coachings all the time. So a lot of this will be teaching oriented, but it obviously applies to anybody as well. The first thing to understand about Fourscore is just the interface. It's pretty intuitive, but quickly, you've got all your scores here. This is just your how you get through and you can sort them in all sorts of different ways. And the more data you feed into Fourscore about your pieces, the more ways you can sort. You've got your bookmarks. We'll get into that. You've got your set lists. And this is the first thing to understand and use in Fourscore, in my opinion. You could just organize things in set lists and you'd be fine. You can get more granular if you add more data, but as long as you have a decent title in there, you're, you're good to go. So let's click on working on these. Let's look at a piece I've been doing. We'll, do, we'll open up the Sturm Etudes. And if I then click, I can see the title up here at the very top. And if I click on that, that's your main menu for that piece. And you have title, composer, or composers. You can have comma-separated composers. Uh, genres, more than one genre. You could have technique. You could have uh, sonata. You could have whatever you want. It's very flexible. Tags, labels, rating, difficulty, time and key. Now, I don't use all of these, but I do use a lot of them. And within this, I think the most valuable thing to understand is this set lists option right here. So you can add this to any set list. So what I have is I have my own stuff working on these in school demos. And if a gig's coming up, um, I probably would have that music and working on these, but maybe I'd make it its own playlist. Then I also have playlists for my students, so what they're working on, and then I have playlists for the different schools that I teach at. And I find it incredibly helpful just in keeping uh, organized with what I'm working on with any particular person or group at any one time. If I click into, for example, this school, oops, I'm not gonna add it. Let me go to playlists, or go to set lists rather, and let me go to this school right here. And you can see these are some pieces that I'm working on with them. Here is a Inez Weirich trio, and you can see I've entered fingerings using the Apple Pencil. And then here's some of their school music. And the way I got this into Fourscore, it was simple. I actually used Fourscore's darkroom feature. So if you go over here, you can click darkroom, and you can then either select uh, from stuff that's on your iPad, or you can click here and you can take a photo. So let's take a quick photo of this page right here. And we'll snap that. And we could, well, we'll take a, the photo of this page too, just to show you how a two page it works. Then we can say done, and we can save it as example, save. And now you see I have this uh, piece of music. Now this is a great example because you can see how horribly I, I uh, took a photo of it, but I can fix that. I can go in to crop and it's not only crop, but it's also rotate. So I can do that and I can zoom in and that's looking a whole heck of a lot better. Crop. I can go to this page, do the same thing. Crop, turn it, pull it up and we are looking much better. I could have done a better job, but that's not bad. Also, you can add via PDF, which is what I usually do, and I use an app called Scannable on my iPhone or iPad to turn things into PDFs, and you can then add them to Fourscore. You can email them to yourself and open them up in Fourscore. You can dump them into Dropbox or Google Drive. All that can be accessed through this cloud service right here. And if it's a file, you can save it directly to your iPad using files and access it there. So those are just a few ways to get files into it. Then there is also the content provider music notes that Fourscore has a relationship with, and you can get content, uh, you can purchase content from them 
also. So that's how that works. Now, if I want to get rid of that, I can go in here and I can say delete. But let's say I actually want to share this. Let's say I, I'm, I'm working on this with somebody and I start making some notes. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to remind them that's tenor clef and maybe they need a little pitch reminders. So we'll say G, B, G. It'll give them a reminder that the bass clef is there. Now, what's cool is I can go and I can I can do it from here using this share button, or I can, at, in any one of these menus, I can just swipe and share comes up. So however you do it, you can send it you as a just a regular PDF without those annotations as a four score file or as an annotated PDF, which is what I do the most often. So you can click there, and then you can do all sorts of things, email it, put it in a different program, save it to Dropbox, print it, which is something I do a lot. And that's how that works. Uh, you can also clean up your scores a little bit. An the annotation mode is quite flexible. This is going to look a little goofy, but let's say I wanted to get rid of all this. Uh, now, obviously, that's a bad color choice because the page is not, uh, that's not good. So I can, I can erase my color, but I can also find a color if I hold down, I believe. Uh, there's a way There's a way to do it. Let's see. Maybe I have to do it with my finger. Oh, yeah. D uh, double click it. You can change the hue so I can make it a little bit more, you know, that didn't really change it a lot, but I could goof around with it and I could find a color that really matches the page. So I could, I could definitely clean this up. But again, just double tap that and you can choose all of that sort of stuff. All right, so I'm going to delete that example. And let's talk a little bit about metadata and adding metadata. If I go in here and I really fill all of this out, so composer, genre, so this is a trio, and if I give things a difficulty level, if it's a student piece, I don't worry about that for my own stuff, but uh, one, I can do one, two, or three. One is like your first year of playing. Two is maybe even playing a, a couple years. And three is for a uh, high school level student. I, I don't worry about rating anything that's professional level, uh, but for students I do. And then I can choose what key it is. And then all of that data, you can sort things. But if you go back to your scores menu, so we could go, let's say we want to find some scales so I can go into here I can look for my scales here are my scales and let's say I want to sort them by key all right now I have all sorts of different versions of things in different keys uh, here's my own D major exercise right here here's uh, Gabe Villacerta C major a minor you get the idea and let's say I'm working on this with a student and I, I want to add a bunch of fingerings or help them out with something, circle a few notes. The problem is if I'm working on this with multiple students, these marks are in the part. And that can be kind of annoying because you're marking something for one student. They don't really, the other one doesn't need it. So what do you do? Well, what you do is you use the rearrange tool and you can actually save this as a new file. So we could call this Bill scales or whatever for my fictional student bill now this is bill scales that we got saved here we can then go back to the original and that's right uh, here and we can erase those markings so I can go in and just get rid of all that in my original and then we but bill scales still has all of those. And I do that all the time for students. I have m multiple people working on if it's solo and ensembles coming up or they've got their all city audition or what have you. Um, so I, and when I'm doing a sectional, I just zip around and I use that darkroom feature to take a photo of the music for every school. I keep it all organized in here by school and I can send this out to the teachers or the students or parents or what have you. It is so useful. It's so useful for me as a player too. I've got built-in features like metronome, tuner. Something I use a lot is the piano. So here is the piano 
I can play along with my students while they're while they're going. I can be writing in on the part. If we've got a weird page turn, let me go to something that's two pages. If we're working on something, let's say, let's call up a score here, and I wanna work on this lower system, and I wanna work on the next page, I can click on this half page turn button, and now I can turn just half the page. So I can be seeing the previous page and then what's coming up on the next page, and I can even move this bar if I wanna see a different amount of the page. You can turn that mode on and off there. Extremely useful, love Fourscore. Can't say enough good things about it. With the Apple Pencil and with my AirTurn foot pedal, it is so useful.